Just letting a couple uh, more folks in and we'll get started here momentarily. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I, uh, right off the top, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mets team president, Sandy Alderson. Thanks everybody for being here, appreciate it. Uh, and before uh, we get started, I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Um, a couple of announcements to make before we get started. The first is that um, we have shifted our uh, uh, interview process and are no longer looking for a chief of baseball, president of baseball operations. Um, we uh, had limited access in some cases and uh, um, as a result have decided that we're going to focus more on the uh, GM position at this point or exclusively on the GM position. Uh, what that means is that I will probably be more involved on the baseball side than I originally expected. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll continue my uh, team president functions, but we'll be uh, more involved on the baseball side than originally anticipated. In terms of a GM search, uh, you know, that's ongoing. Uh, we've talked to a number of people and uh, we'll continue to do so and um, hope that we make progress uh, through Thanksgiving and uh, into the first week of December. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, the focus now is on uh, a general manager. Uh, secondly, with respect to our managerial position, uh, I informed Louis Rojas earlier today that he would be the manager in 2021. Um, very happy about that decision. Uh, I think Louis is happy as well. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, working with Louis, uh, with our new general manager, the rest of the baseball operations group um, toward a successful 2021 season. So Louis is going to be back. Uh, those are the really the two opening remarks. Happy to answer questions on those topics or any other at this point. And again, Good. thanks thanks for being here. Thank you, Sandy. And uh, a reminder for everyone to click on the participants tab at the bottom, followed by the raise your hand tab. And uh, we will call on you. Please remember, so our live audiences on all the social outlets from Met social uh, channels to SNY's channels, uh, can uh, understand and follow along, please state your name and affiliation, and then follow that with your question. Our first question will be from Steve Gelbs. Hey, Sandy, as Harold just said, Steve Gelbs, SNY. Um, okay. So just, just for a little further clarification, you said that, that you didn't necessarily get granted um, you know, the permission, I would, I would assume, to talk to the candidates that you had in mind or, or got some pushback there. Was it simply a case of you having certain candidates in mind and realizing they wouldn't be available to you? Or as you got further along in the process, did you feel as if a president of baseball operations was not as necessary as you had initially envisioned it? Well, look, you know, the, the structure of a president of baseball operations and a general manager is in part uh, an attempt to bring more talent into the organization. And with the um, position of president of baseball operations, typically one would get access to, to individuals, for example, who are currently general managers under a president of baseball operations. Uh, in some cases, we were really looking at potential lateral moves. Um, we thought that, um, uh, and look, we respect the fact that individuals are under contract with other clubs. Um, there are individual cases that might involve, um, you know, prior history uh, locally here in New York or what have you. There might be circumstances that would suggest that perhaps uh, a lateral move would be possible. Uh, in each of those instances, uh, that wasn't the case. Um, with respect to those that we might attempt to elevate to that position, um, there really were only a couple of conversations that we had. Um, and, uh, um, you know, based on those conversations and again, limited, uh, access, 
um, we decided to forego that uh, position, that possibility of a, of a president of baseball operations position and focus on uh, the general manager. So it, it was mostly a combination of, uh, of um, you know, inability to uh, get access to individuals for a lateral move. And in one or two other cases, um, for example, there was a very strong family issue that uh, um, I think prevented a candidate from moving forward. But, um, you know, we're, we're happy with where we are. We've uh, canvassed the possibilities. And, um, and as a result, we've begun to focus on the GM position. With regards to the GM position, do you have a timetable where you either expect or, or hope to have someone in place? And is a lack of someone in that position right now preventing you at all from making any sort of moves? Or if an opportunity arose player acquisition wise, currently, would you, you know, pull the trigger if, if it made sense? No, I think that it's a good question. Um, I think that, uh, that we're not concerned about a timeline with respect to this person that we hire. Uh, of course, we'd like to get that person in place sooner rather than later, but I absolutely do not believe that it's uh, preventing us from moving forward on the player front and all of the other issues that are presented in the off season. We're, we're, uh, you know, we have meetings daily. Uh, we've got very capable people uh, in the organization at various levels, and uh, that's not impeding us at all. Ed Coleman, your line is open. Uh, hey, Sandy. Uh, happy, hey, Ed. happy birthday, by the way, a day late. But, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, can, you, can you share with us how many people you've interviewed thus far and, and how many you may have on tap and, and what the process might be for second interviews, et cetera? Yeah, so we've... Uh, uh, with respect to the GM position, we've interviewed um, a half dozen. And, um, you know, we will decide at some point whether we need a second round uh, for uh, um, perhaps presenting uh, one or two candidates uh, to Steve. Steve, this is, this is a decision that Steve will be involved in as well. Um, but right now, uh, you know, we've, in, we've, we've interviewed about six and, uh, um, We'll see whether second interviews, third interviews are necessary. We just haven't uh, made that decision yet. Thanks. Next question is from uh, Mike Puma. Hey, Sandy. Uh, hey, couple, Mike. A couple of things. Um, just uh, you, you said that Luis Rojas is coming back. Uh, you obviously have some experience uh, with him uh, from previous time in the organization. Just uh, tell me what appeals to you about Luis. Well, there are a couple of things, um, and I think I've stated this before. Um, <clears throat> you know, Louis as an individual, as a person uh, who's able to relate to his players, um, uh, both in terms of their professional work as well as, as, well as their personal lives. I think he's uh, exceptional in that regard. Um, I think that on the professional side, um, managing a game, I think that uh, he will be better. We need to make sure that you know he has all of the uh, necessary resources to be better and make good decisions, based not only on his own judgment but uh, you know information that's available. He's very open to that, so uh, you know I, I'm very happy that Louis is coming back. Uh, again, both from a personal standpoint and a, and a professional. And I know you you don't want to get too detailed about who you spoke to, but uh, I mean Theo Epstein uh, became available last week. Can we assume you at least reached out to Gage if he had any interest in, in coming here? Uh, no, we didn't. We did not reach out to Theo. Um, Theo has indicated a desire to take a year off. He's looking at a you know, broad range of of uh, options, and um, so we did not reach out. No. Anthony DeComo, your line is open. Hey, Sandy, Anthony DeComo on yeah. OB.com. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously going the GM route instead. Is that a long-term move in that, will you consider maybe a year from now hiring a president or is the hire you make now ultimately going to be the guy to lead baseball operations going forward? Uh, <clears throat> I think that's, that's a very good question. I, I think what we would like to do is find someone as general manager who is capable of growing into the uh, other role. 
that would be ideal. And um, uh, so that's, I think, what we're hoping for. Uh, and, and we'll see whether, you know, the person that we have in the period of time between now and next season or what have you, um, whether that actually happens. But I think that's the goal. And also, you mentioned um, various people in the organization having a hand in, in everything that you're doing right now. Um, John Rico had kind of stepped away from baseball ops. Is he doing baseball ops stuff for you guys now? And is he a candidate for that job? So John and I have talked about it. Uh, he's not a candidate for the job. Uh, John will have a, um, what I call a multidiscipline role for us going forward. Um, he will be sort of right hand, my right hand person, both in terms of uh, how I interface with baseball operations, but also uh, with the business side. So John's gonna have a, a, you know, a, a somewhat different role from when I was here the last time a similar role to, to the one that he had over the last uh, couple of years. Howie Rose, you're up next. Hey, Sandy, Howie Rose yeah. here. Yeah. Wayne Randazzo is wingman on WCBS and Mets Radio. <laughs> um, with, this, this speaks a little bit to what Tony was asking you, but with regard specifically to the GM's position, has the template or the job description itself changed in the absence of hiring a president of baseball operations as you envision it no i don't think so i don't think i don't think the job description for the gm sorry i couldn't quite hear you um has changed but uh um i think my relationship with that gm has changed somewhat so um as i said at the outset i will probably be um you know more involved in the baseball side than originally anticipated but I don't expect that that's going to have any impact on my role generally with the company, but I will be a little more involved uh, uh, with the baseball than I originally thought, but I don't think it changes the, the job description for the GM. In Britain, your line's open. Hey, Sandy, what, what qualities, uh, Tim Britton from The Athletic, um, yeah. what, what qualities are you looking for specifically in a general manager candidate right now? What, what, stand, what appeals to you most for that role? Well, I think that, you know, the type of person that I'm looking for in that rule would be the type of person that I'm looking for in any leadership position. Uh, somebody who has some modicum of experience uh, in this particular, you know, area, baseball, um, but also, you know, someone who has the ability to provide solid, inspirational, if you will, leadership. And that's about communication, it's about empathy, it's about um, um, sort of understanding how organizations function, uh, emphasis on teamwork, collaboration, inclusiveness. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that I'm looking for. Sort of a humble approach to leadership uh, as, as opposed to one that, you know, really has to do with title and uh, uh, responsibility and authority. Um, I'm looking for somebody who can work within a team. And uh, that's what we're trying to create, not just on the baseball side, but uh, also um, on the business side. And when I say that, I, I don't mean to suggest that, you know, all the decisions are going to make be made uh, collaboratively, but uh, people have to be willing to collaborate while at the same time, we're going to try to push, delegate and push down as low as possible the decision-making uh, throughout the organization so that people feel as if uh, they can, while they're accountable and responsible, that they also have the freedom to make decisions. Is there a, a certain philosophical background in terms of baseball? You know, you, those are a lot of interpersonal qualities you're talking about. Yeah. Is there a baseball background that, that stands out to you that, that you would like to pursue? Well, you know, many candidates come from the scouting uh, area. Some might come from an analytical background, player development, administration, you know, there are a variety of, of uh, routes to this type of position. Um, you're not gonna find anybody that's sort of done it all that, uh, you know, would come into this position. But I think, you know, from my standpoint, um, you know, our scouting operation is very strong. Uh, administratively, I think we do a fine job. From a player development standpoint, I think we, we need to improve. Um, 
but I'm looking for somebody who has overall uh, baseball credibility and, and more so the, the, the enthusiasm, the energy that's necessary to affect change and build out an organization over a period of time. While at the same time, look, we wanna be competitive on, at the major league level too. So there's, there's a lot to be done, but uh, um, you know, I'm looking for somebody who has, has overall ability rather than any particular you know, background within the, the, the baseball domain. Disha, your uh, line is open. Hey, Sandy. Disha, those are with the Daily Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you're going to be taking on more responsibility than you initially anticipated. Um, with you just kind of jumping back into this role, how comfortable do you feel taking on all of that added responsibility? And was this something that you kind of had to think about? Uh, something I had to think about, but I think uh, it's, it's born out of the circumstances. Um, and again, you know, um, I hope that we are able to hire someone who will uh, be able to handle most of the traditional general manager role. Um, I would expect that I will be a little more involved in decision making and mentoring. Um, but, you know, I don't expect to get down in the weeds either. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure that we, we build out the organization in a way that um, uh, at each level, you know, we're functioning uh, not on an independent basis, a, a coordinated basis, but allowing people to use their judgment and, uh, you know, make choices that they understand are within a framework and based on certain principles that we have, but that uh, someone like my, myself doesn't have to be involved on a, you know, decision by decision basis. I don't expect that at all. And then just kind of switching topics, um, Steve Cohen tweeted that he wanted to spend that freed up contract money from Cano um, on the players. Um, what are just some of your initial ideas of how you want to spend that extra money? Well, you know, I think, first of all, we have to be mindful that there's, there's an additional amount of money to be spent in 2021, which is already earmarked for 22 and 23. So it's not quite as easy as just, uh, you know, an add on. Um, on the other hand, it does, you know, provide us some additional flexibility. The flexibility comes not only to, you know, financially uh, in our ability to acquire players, it also gives us some, some additional roster flexibility, as it turns out, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the players that we have and, you know, the, where they're best utilized. Um, we have a number of holes to fill. Um, you know, we've talked about starting pitching. We've talked about the outfield. We've talked about catching. Um, um, we'd like to enhance the bullpen somewhat. So we've got a lot of places uh, where we might invest. And uh, this, this definitely gives us a little more flexibility. Mike Vaccaro, your line is open. Hi, Sandy. Mike Vaccaro, New York Post. Happy yeah. Um, this is more a general question than maybe may or may not be attached to this, but how are you feeling? I mean, good. Good. Yes. Very well. Thank you. I mean, is that, uh, did, was that, was that at all any concern to uh, adding on whatever temporary official, you know, responsibilities there might be for now? No, no, that wasn't a consideration at all. Thank you. Yep. Your next question comes from Andy Martino. Uh, Sandy, do you fully expect Cano to be with the organization after his suspension? Or I understand it doesn't affect the financial obligation, but are you considering or would you consider releasing him? That's not something that I, I think we would uh, entertain at this point. Um, I mean, we're just dealing with the, the, the initial impact of this and uh, uh, on our roster, on our uh, offseason planning. So, um, you know, if we if we take that decision, it's something that we'll entertain further down the road. I think that, uh, you know, from our standpoint, it's about dealing with the consequences at this point, not, not the, uh, um, not the suspension itself. And do you know if all the Rojas's coaches will return? Has that decision been made? Uh, that decision has not been made. Um, but one of the reasons for making sure that Louis knew that he would be the manager uh, was that we get started in, in that evaluation process and making those decisions. So that that should be coming forth, you know, in in the next couple of weeks. Thanks. Yeah. 
Next question from Lindsay Kramer. Hi, this is Lindsay Kramer from Syracuse.com and the Post Standard uh, covering the Syracuse Mets. So a couple Mets uh, related questions, Sandy. Thanks for coming on. First of all, I was curious about the uh, current contract status of Tim Tebow, if he's going to return the organization, and if so, why, and if not, why not? So I talked to Tim uh, Saturday uh, in between uh, Florida football and some other SEC obligation. <laughs> uh, he's anxious to come back. You know, and I told Tim, look, I, why would you want to uh, end your quest uh, based on a COVID-related uh, reason? You know, that you didn't get a chance to perform this year. Uh, he was hurt a little bit uh, in the previous year. So, you know, I think Tim is committed to coming back. And I think we're committed to giving him an opportunity to do that. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. I mean, this is not a a quest without end at some point, you know, it, it will come culminate, but I think that will be at a time when, when Tim and the organization come to some agreement about, you know, where he is and what his, what his potential is. But I didn't want him to go out, you know, based on some COVID related uh, interruption of his, his uh, attempt to play. Having said that, you know, coming off the 2019 season where he was hurt and, uh, kind of a tough year, not playing this year, and then he's I, what early thirties, mid thirties. What what would you expect we'd have, you know, future wise, you know, in terms of baseball potential? We'll see. Mm-hmm. No, I think that I think that uh, first of all, let me say this: I think that the organization has already benefited significantly from his involvement with the Mets and his uh, pursuit of a baseball career. I think the Mets have benefited. I think baseball has benefited. Um, as I said, this is not something that will go on forever. Uh, and at some point it will lose its uh, cachet or, or the interest of fans. But, um, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier with the way Tim has, has uh, conducted himself as, you know, not only a teammate, but um, a representative of the Mets. So um, given all of that, He's entitled to another shot um, post-COVID, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's coming back. Next question from Don Amori. Yeah, hi, Sandy. Don Amori for the Hartford Current. Um, I just had a, a question for you about, about Steve. I, I'm wondering through these first couple of weeks and, and as these first couple of decisions have, have played out, what stands out to you as unique or about Steve's ownership style, about his management style, given your long experience in the game? Well, I think, you know, I think what stands out the most is that, uh, is how he's embraced um, his ownership and his relation with the fans, uh, pro- predominantly through, you know, Twitter, but uh, other means as well. Um, and I think that, you know, what he's done is it, through his own enthusiasm, I think he's inspired the rest of us and uh, created a level of energy and enthusiasm that, that sort of corresponds with his. Um, so I, I was in Oakland when a new organization took over, a new uh, ownership took over. Um, you know, that wasn't a, exactly a social media drenched uh, um, environment at that time, 1981. Um, so I, to me, it's, it's really refreshing. It's uh, energizing, it's um, um, fun. And, uh, you know, at the same time, I think we, you know, we are being forced to um, uh, be responsive and uh, um, rational. He asks a lot of great questions and, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, um, baseball and what, what he doesn't know and what he'd like to know. So uh, um, he's inquisitive. So it, it, you know, it's been great so far. I have, I have conversations with him virtually every day, uh, often more than once. And uh, um, he learns something from those conversations and so do I. So it's been, it's been great. Back to Steve Gelbs. 
Hey, Sandy, I was just curious if uh, you have had any discussions with Michael Conforto's people about a potential extension, and if not, if that's something that that um, you think will happen at some point this offseason, at least exploring uh, that possibility. Well, I've had conversations with Michael on a variety of issues, but none related to the contract. Um, that would that would be uh, a conversation I'd have with uh, um, his agent. So, um, yes, at some point, I'm sure we will um, broach that topic and take their temperature and uh, see where things stand. But right now, that those conversations have not not uh, taken place. Thanks. Yeah. Tim By the way, your lines. lighting is as bad as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Britton, you're uh, up next. Hey, Sandy, uh, you, you mentioned uh, kind of the team's needs in, in broad tech, uh, broad context so far. I, I'm wondering, where do you view this team competitively right now coming off the, the shortened season that they had? How close do you think the Mets are right now to being a contender uh, in the NL East and in the National League as a whole? as we stand at this moment you know do, uh, do you think you're a player away from from being right there or is it several players no i don't think we're a player away i think we need more than that do we have a good foundation yes i think we have an excellent foundation but i think that you know our needs are um multiple at this point and that uh you know we're more than a player away now um you know who that player is what position that player uh you know plays um, I think we've got some flexibility there in terms of how we address it. We're not going to address everything uh, necessarily in the same way. Um, we want to, you know, check all the boxes, but at the same time, um, you know, we're going to be focused on where we can best improve. And uh, so I would, you know, we need to address not only some positions on the, on, on the, on the team itself, but also the depth that we have. So, you know, we're signing minor league free agents. We signed somebody to a major league contract that might've been a little um, out of the ordinary, but I think that th those kinds of, of uh, uh, additions are addressing our depth issue. Um, so we got a lot, of, a lot of things to do, but in terms of our foundation, I think we got a solid foundation and hopefully we have, uh, you know, we have the ability to get better in a lot of different positions. And then going back to the the front office setup that you're you're pursuing, were, were you surprised that you didn't you had such limited access to uh, other executive talent in the sport? Did you expect to be able to to talk to more people uh, and to have more serious inquisition there? You know, initially I had higher expectations, but as we got into it and I thought about it and the environment that we're in currently, um, I wasn't surprised. Um, you know, there are a lot of organizations now that are focused on front office talent. Uh, and it's, it's not just about players. It's, it's about how those players are utilized, uh, which ones are kept, which ones are let go. And, you know, so front offices, and you can see this in the successful organizations that are out there, uh, have become incredibly important. And so, uh, you know, clubs don't like to lose those assets. And, uh, so I get it, um, but uh, you know we're a little disappointed. But as as time went on, it became clear that uh, um, people are going to be careful about giving up their front office talent. Yeah. All right, we have uh, about three more. Uh, Lloyd, your line's open. Hey, Sandy, welcome back to the world's borough. Uh, okay. You uh, mentioned that Luis Rojas is coming back. Um, historically, general managers get to choose their, their manager. And in sports, it seems like there's a problem when the general manager doesn't have that. Uh, we see these shotgun marriages not working out. I'm yeah. just curious if there was some concern on your part making that announcement today before hiring a general manager. Uh, you know, Lloyd, there hasn't, I don't have that concern and I'll tell you why. Most with, with, without exception, I think the candidates with whom we've had interviews for the GM position, we've discussed this, this managerial situation. And um, to a person, um, they agreed that, you know, under the circumstances, bringing Louie back as manager was the right thing to do. 
So it, it's not as if this is a lunar, unilateral decision on my part or the, you know, the existing organization. We've actually talked through this with, uh, with candidates to be the GM and uh, generally got, um, you know, um, agreement that uh, in this particular case, that was the right thing to do. So not that they, you know, we're going to make the decision for us, but it's the issue has been broached and I'm comfortable that this is not a shotgun marriage that will occur. Ron Blum, your line is open. Hi, Sandy. Do you head into 2021 at this point anticipating you'll need a designated hitter or not? Going into 2021, hoping we need a designated hitter. <laughs> I think uh, both from a Mets standpoint and from a general baseball standpoint, that having a DH in the National League is a good thing. And, uh, you know, I just think that the time has come that um, both leagues play with the same resources, the same options. And, um, uh, Particularly as it relates, you know, ultimately to uh, say the World Series, it's important. But also, you know, the the relationship between pitching and hitting, and um, whether pitchers hit. I mean, the fact is, you know, pitchers can't even bunt anymore. So um, I'm in favor of putting a hitter in that uh, that additional slot, and I think ultimately it makes the game more exciting more offense or more opportunity for offense, uh, a bigger challenge for the pitchers. I just think that uh, we've gotten to the point where pitching has become so specialized and uh, the risk of injury hitting, well, I don't think it's significant, it's there. Um, but more importantly, I just think for the overall uh, quality of the game, the excitement level that the DH is the right thing. And the Not national. knowing that it, whether it will or will not be in place for 2021, do you anticipate, do you proceed assuming you'll need one till you know you don't? I don't think we have to proceed because I think we have options internally. We're not looking for a DH in the open market. <laughs> that would be uh, one of our lesser priorities. Um, I just hope we have the DH so that we can better utilize what we already have. All right, uh, two more. Andy Martino, your line is open. Uh, Sadie, have you been able to uh, conduct any of those six or so GM interviews in person? And, and if not, or if that's limited because of the pandemic, how, how might that impact the search or uh, present an additional challenge to the search when you're looking for some of these deep qualities in people and you're trying to assess that over a Zoom perhaps? How, how's that impacting it? Well, there are very few of the, of the six that we've interviewed that I don't know personally and haven't interacted with, uh, you know, physically in real time um, and not remotely. So I don't, I don't really think that's an issue. I, I think it's an important aspect of an, of an interview process, but uh, I think I've got sufficient knowledge of that person and have interacted with them in the past that uh, doing this remotely is is uh, fine because it's really about, you know, an exchange of information, talking about philosophy and strategy. Um, and so I've, I've found the Zoom calls to be very effective. And do you personally plan on uh, working at the city field offices uh, prior to whenever the rest of us can leave the house with the vaccine <laughs> or are you gonna be remote yourself? Well, our offices are closed now. So, you know, it would be possible for me physically to go there and. You know, knock around in the offices uh, myself. But again, right now, I think we're, we're functioning very effectively. And in fact, I found, you know, WebEx, Zoom, what have you, to have enhanced the level of communication based on what I'm used to than, than to uh, um, diminish it. So I've been really happy with the ability to, uh, to communicate. And I think maybe that's one of the byproducts of this uh, uh, health situation that we have is that uh, means of communication, the ability to function efficiently remotely has really enhanced incredibly. And uh, so it's just a matter of getting comfortable with it. And, and, and uh, I certainly feel comfortable with it now. Howie, uh, the final question goes to you. 
Thank you. Sandy, do you have a feel for, based on conversations you might have had with some of your executive brethren around the game, where the schedule stands? Are you fully expecting that we'll be able to get started on April 1st, or are there contingencies in place for a start that might be somewhat later with perhaps fewer games? So before I answer that, Howie, uh, is that beard, is that a COVID thing or is that permanent? It is. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> okay. It is what? It is, it is permanent? It is, it is it's COVID. a COVID, it's, it's COVID rebellion, if you will. All right. Well, good. Glad to see it. Um, so uh, I don't think there's anything that uh, has actually been finalized. I think various scenarios are under consideration. And I think you have to go back to, you know, what transpired in the off season. Well, not the off season, but the spring of, of last year. You know, there are a lot of issues that have be worked out between MLB and Players Association. I think the biggest uh, variable right now, though, is the vaccine. And I, I think that's true, not only for our players, but obviously for fans back in the ballpark. But if it looks like the vaccine is going to be available uh, to the, you know, the, the player population um, as we get into the spring, then I think, you know, we'll be more encouraged about, you know, a full season. But I think there's going to be this convergence between the, the baseball schedule beginning of spring training and, and the vaccine. And the vaccine is looks like it's going to be available, you know, 30 days later. We might end up with a 30 day delay in spring training. I don't know, but I think that it's hard to to predict that right now. But I think those that that's the key factor that will will drive, you know, the length of the season, the beginning of the season, and uh, you know how Major League Baseball and the union uh, approach those issues. Ed Coleman, I saw your hand uh, last minute, so don't want to cut you off. We will let you have the final question. All right, Sandy. I, I, thanks, Harold. Uh, clarification, really, Sandy. It's, I, I assume this is going to be a collaborative venture, but uh, you said at the opening press conference that you'd have a seat at the table, not necessarily at the head of the table. So where are you, where are you sitting now at this point? I'm probably moving around the corner a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, Maybe it'll be a round table uh, and, and I'll be the only one with uh, uh, a, a chair with arms. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that that uh, that will change a little bit, I think. Good. Thank you, uh, Sandy. And thank everybody for joining us this afternoon. We really do look forward to being in touch again soon. And uh, everyone have a great Thanksgiving week. Thanks, everybody.